puso ang gawin yung bulwagan. Bulwagan ng pagsamba namin sa inyo. Manahan kayo sa aming espiritu at ngayon turuan niyo po kami. Sa ngalan ng iyong anak, inamin Panginoong itinatalaga ang aming isip, ang aming pansin, ang aming lakas. Teach us, guide us, lead us unto greater knowledge of you. In the name of your Son, our Healer, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Ang Book of Acts po ay talagang napakainang basahin at pag-aralan. The Book of Acts informs, inspires, instructs. At napakarami nating mapupulot na aral maging sa ating sariling panahon. Ang pamagat ng pag-aaral natin ngayon, of angels and worms. Mga anghel at mga uod. Ito po ang ating sisikapin ngayon sa tulong ng Panginoon na unawain Acts chapter 12. And we will begin with verses 1 to 4. I will be reading from the contemporary English version. At that time, King Herod caused terrible suffering for some members of the church. He ordered soldiers to cut off the head of James, the brother of John. When Herod saw that this pleased the Jewish people, he had Peter arrested during the festival of thin bread. He put Peter in jail and ordered four squads of soldiers to guard him. Herod planned to put him on trial in public after the festival. Herod Agrippa I is the grandson of Herod the Great, and he was the sitting king at this time. Now James follows Stephen to martyrdom. Alam po natin na si Stephen ang unang pinatay dahil sa pangalan ng Panginoon at siya ay binato. Ito namang si James ay pinugutan ng ulo. Taste for blood demands another sacrifice. Peter. Ginanahan itong si Herod nung makita niya na popular sa mga tao yung ginagawang pagpatay sa mga Christian leaders. Now, James and Peter were two of Jesus' closest disciples. The other very close one was John who could have been safely away in Ephesus at that time. So there was a logical reason for the persecution because Jesus, as we have already discussed, was declared by his believers as king of the Jews, king of kings. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the coming king. And this was a threat to the empire because the Roman Empire had an official teaching that the emperor was God, that the sitting emperor was the son of God, the successor of the God emperor who ascended to heaven when he died. That was their official religion. Kaya nanganibang buhay ng mga mananampalataya sa Panginoon na nananalig at nagsisiwalat ng kanilang paniniwalig na si Jesus ay anak ng Diyos. In fact, the blood relatives of Jesus also came under careful watch and horrible persecution because it was feared that they could make dynastic claims to the throne of Israel or of Rome itself. Ang kasaysayan po ay nakasulat at nagpapatunay na ang mga kamag-anak ng Panginoong Jesus sa laman, the blood relatives were really persecuted. In fact, historians report that Herod's destruction and the burning of family genealogies in Israel ipinabura, ipinasunog nitong si Haring Herod ang history ng mga pamilya. Bakit? Para mabura ang linya ng Panginoong Jesus that goes directly to the throne of David. They were very insecure about these issues of who was the real king, who was the royal descendants of David. And Jesus happened to descend from David, both from Joseph and Mary's side. So napakalaki nung claim, kaya nung lumaon, kahit ang Panginoon ay wala na at bumalik na sa langit, pati mga natira niya kamag-anak dito sa lupa ay pinaghanap-hanap pa at pinag-uusig at binura ang nakasulat na kasaysayan. It was made worse because the family of Herod was not Jewish at all. They were Edomians, foreigners, appointed by Rome to rule Israel as tetrarchs. Yan naman talaga ang mga title nila. Mahalaga po na ma-appreciate natin yung historical context and the historical background of all of these persecutions. Now, Acts 12.5 While Peter was being kept in jail, the church never stopped praying for God to God for him. Of course, the, le the lesson rings clear. That prayer is the answer to persecution and even to real and present danger. Maging sa buhay natin ngayon. 
na ang panalangin na hindi nagbabago ng kapangyarihan dahil hindi naman nagbabago ang Diyos sa langit, ito ang tugon sa mga sulirani na parang walang kalutasan. How can you go against the empire? Even Israel as a nation was no match to Rome. Now even the nation was after its own citizens. And Peter was in jail to be tried very, very soon and very likely to be killed also, like Stephen, like James, and very much like Jesus. Acts 12, 6-10 The night before Peter who has to be put on trial, he was asleep and bound by two chains. A soldier was guarding him on each side, and two other soldiers were guarding the entrance to the jail. Suddenly an angel from the Lord appeared, and light flashed around in the cell. The angel poked Peter in the side and woke him up. Then he said, Quick, get up. Sa bisperas ng paglilitis, nung gabi na yon, bago dumating ang kanaumagahan na siya ililitisin, biglang nagliwanag dito sa kulungan at isa ahel ng Panginoon ang isinugo ng langit at naglaglagan ang mga kadena, nakalag ang mga kadena nitong si Pedro. Naranasan niyo na ba na may makati kayong bahagi ng katawan, hindi niyo makamot? Dahil hindi niyo maabot or whatever? Pero ito nakakadena ka talagang hindi mo maabot ano man ang mangyari. Mahirap. Pero nalaglag ang mga kadena at kinalabit nitong anghel si Pedro upang bumangon at sabi, magbadali ka, tayo. The chains fell off his hands. And the angel said, get dressed and put on your sandals. Peter did what he was told. Then the angel said, Now put on your coat and follow me. Peter left with the angel, but he thought everything was only a dream. They went past the two guards of soldiers, and when they came to an iron gate to the city, it opened by itself. They went out and were going along the street, when all at once, the angel disappeared. Di kaginsa-ginsa, lumabas ang anghel, nalagot ang mga kadena, nagliwanag doon sa karsel, at siya ay kinalabit at pinabangon, at sabi, magmadali ka, magbihis ka, isuot mo ang iyong sapin sa paa, magbalabal ka, at tayo alis. At hindi sila nakita ng mga nagbabantay na nakatayo sa dalawang panig ng pintuan. At ang pintong bakal ay kusang nagbukas, at sila ay nandun na sa labas, sa kalsada, habang madilim pa. At biglang nawala ang anghel nung si Pedro ay nasa labas na. Now, Peter slept through it all. Maybe a lesson learned from Jesus who was sleeping through a storm. Can you imagine yourself being tried the following morning with two of your closest co-workers already dead in the name of Jesus because of the same accusation and you fall asleep? What kind of trust is that? Meanwhile, the church was praying. Yung may magagawa na nalangin, yun ang magagawa nila eh. At si Pedro naman, itinulog. Isang malaking leksyon sa atin mga kabatid. Nakakadena ka, wala ka naman magawa sa oras na ito, manalangin ka, tapos matulog ka na lang. Kasi wala ka nilang naman magagawa. Ano magagawa mong mag-alala? Ano magagawa mong matakot? Mapuyat? Lalo lamang na lalala ang kalagayan mo dahil masisira ang iyong kalusugan. Mawawalan ka ng galing mag-isip dahil puyat ka. So itulog mo na lang. Matapos ka manalangin. And get prayerful support from other people because that's the best that people can do to get support from fellow believers. Now, light was there and it's usually, but not always, accompanied the arrival of angels. And the angel said, Quick! Napapansin nyo ba? Sa Bible, angels seem to be always in a hurry. Merong definite time frame ang kanila mga misyon. Quick! Sa Sodom, quick! Laging madalian nyo. Now, let's take a look at the components of this miracle and the rescue. First, were the automatic components. Alin ang mga automatic dito, hindi ginawa ng tao, nangyari na lang, nalaglag ang mga kadena. The chains fell off. The iron gate opened. The guards were blinded. Automatic. This is what heaven does for people. And if you would look at them, there were things that people could not do on their own. So heaven did for Peter what he could not do. That's one. 
element of a miracle. And there's other element, that those were the manual elements. Yung gagawin ng tao kasi kaya niya. So kinalabit si Peter para magising. This angel that wore a heavenly body had to enter the physical world completely to really fully, physically poke Peter. Hindi ito yung poke sa Facebook. Okay? So kinalabit siya talaga. Now Peter had to quickly get up. Hindi siya ibinangon. Kaya naman niya eh. He was asked to get dressed, to put on his sandals, and to follow the angel, and to walk by himself safely out of the prison. All of this he could do on his own. So don't wait for heaven to do for you what you can do yourself. And rest assured that in tandem with what you can do and what you really do, heaven does what it's, it does and it is a partnership. Hindi mo pwedeng ipalutas sa Panginoon lahat ng problema mo, siya lahat gagawa. Kailangan gawin mo yung kaya mo at yung hindi mo kaya ipagpaubaya sa Diyos. So the manual things are things that people do themselves. In solving your own troubles and problems and challenges, identify what you can do and do them. And then pray and leave the rest up to God. But first, do your part. Ibinangon ba siya ng anghel? No, kaya naman niya eh. So huwag tayong magpa-baby kahit kanino man, basta kaya nating gawin. In dealing with heaven, you first act. You initiate. You plan. You pray. You do the good thing. You do the practical thing and let God make the seed grow. And also, because heaven acts, you also react. You act on your own and you react to what God does. Sabi ng angel, bumangon ka, bumangon naman siya. That's a reaction. Return the ball to God's court. Parang tennis yan, sinerban ka ng Lord, iserve mo pabalik, do your part, and then iserve mo pabalik sa'yo. There is a game. Pero pag hindi ka marunong magbalik ng bola, matatapos ang laro. Acts 12, 11 to 12. Peter now realized what had happened. And he said, I am certain that the Lord sent His angel to rescue me from Herod and from everything the Jewish leaders planned to do for me. Then Peter went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark. Many of the Lord's followers had come together there and were praying. So nahimasmasan ang Pedro at sabi niya, ngayon tiyak na tiyak ko na na ang Panginoon na nagpadala ng anghel para ko iligtas kay Herod at dito sa mga Jewish leaders. Now, ako nag-italicize ang word na Jewish when we quoted from Scripture. Because now you notice that the Christians are beginning to identify themselves apart from the Jewish people of which they really also are Jewish. Pero by the time that Acts was being written, the Christian writers were already aware that there was now an identity that separated them from the traditional Jewish nation. So now they call their own kababayan Jewish as if they were not. Parang sumusulat ka na itong mga Pilipinong ito nakakainis sa parang hindi ka Pilipino. Meron ng ganong klaseng identity separation. So Jewish was becoming the other. Another entity. Lumilinaw na ang Christianity. Nakakaroon na ng sarili niyang identity. Acts 12, 13-14 Peter knocked on the gate. And a servant named Rhoda came to answer. When she heard Peter's voice, she was too excited to open the gate. She ran back into the house and said that Peter was standing there. So nakarating na itong si Pedro sa bahay ni Mary na pinagtitipunan ng mga kapatira na nananalangin para sa kanya. Sa pagkatok niya, itong katulong na babaeng si Rhoda, ang lumabas ng bahay, naglaka doon sa patio, nakarating doon sa gate. At sino to? At nung marinig niya si Pedro, sobra siyang na-excite, hindi niya binuksan ang pinto, nagtatakbo siya pabalik ng bahay. But this Rhoda must be very special because she's one of the very few women in the New Testament that was mentioned with a name. Not even the names of the sisters of Jesus were mentioned. But this was a servant and a woman and she was named Rhoda. Para siyang si Mary Magdalene. Sa kanya unang, Nagpakita itong si Pedro matapos pagkaroon ng pangalawang buhay galing sa kulungan 
na parang si Mary Magdalene naman sa kanya una nagpakita ang Panginoong Jesus noong ang Panginoon ay bumangon. Both were female and both were recipients of a great privilege of being the first to know about a great miracle. So sabi niya, si Pedro, si Pedro, nasa labas. Acts 12, 15 to 16, You are crazy, everyone told her. But she kept saying that it was Peter. Then they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking until finally they opened the gate. They saw him and were completely amazed. So there's something very interesting here. The church was assembled praying for Peter's deliverance. And now that Peter was delivered, they wouldn't believe it. Hindi kaya sila naniniwala sa sarili nilang dasal? So, the woman was called crazy, like Mary Magdalene was also called crazy by some of the disciples. Sabi nila, his angel yan, yung spiritual body lang niya yan, yung multo lang niya yan, yung kaluluwa niya lang yan, hindi yan yung tunay niyang katawan. And they were completely amazed. They did not seem to expect much. But nevertheless, the Lord moved. And the Lord moved powerfully, majestically, amazingly. Siyempre, si Pedro hindi pinagbigyan. Alam naman niya yung turo ni Jesus, Knock and it shall be opened to you. So hindi siya tumigil kakakatok. He just kept knocking. This is a constant biblical philosophy. Just keep knocking. Kung ano man ang kinakatokan nyo ngayon sa buhay nyo, mga kapatid, just keep knocking. Basta alam nyo na mabuti yon at para sa ikabubuti, ninyo o ng higit na nakararami, Sabi ng Panginoon, huwag kang mapabago dumingi. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Eh kung matampuhin siya, di sana huwag niya nga. Umalis na siya. Huwag kayong tampurista, mga tampurista, losers. Wala mangyayari sa inyo pag tampo kayo ng tampo. Lalo kung hindi pa laman laman lang napansin na nagtatampo kayo. Parang taguan, tago kayo ng tago, wala naman naghanap. Tapos dahan-dahan na kayong lalabas mag-isa, pawis na pawis. Yung pala kumakain na yung mga kalaro nyo. Huwag kayong tampulisa sa buhay. Kailangan, keep insisting. Heaven rewards yung mapilit na mga pananalangin. At huwag kayong bibigay. Acts 12, 17, Peter men motioned to them to keep quiet. Then he told how the Lord had let him out of jail. He also said, tell James and the others what has happened. After that, he left and went somewhere else. Si James yung isa sa mga uh, actual leaders na ng church, the brother of the Lord. So apparently, James was not there. It was wise for them not to be all in one place. Of course, you don't put all of your eggs in one basket. At the time, there was persecution. Hinuhuli yung mga leader. Dapat lang na mag sila. Huwag sama-sama sa isang lugar. Pero, ito na si Pedro ren Matapos sila ipasabi sa mga nananalangin at nag-aalala, okay na ako. Umalis na rin siya. Mga kapatid, kung may nananalangin para sa inyo, utang na loob naman, gumaling na pala kayo, sabihan nyo naman. Kung misan ako mismo nararanasan ko, ang tagal-tagal mong inadalangin, nagumaling na pala. Tapos makikita mo sa mall, pakalat-kalat doon, akala ko ba nakaratay ka? Ay, matagal po akong gumaling. Pati ka malang nagsasabi. Pagod na kaming kadadasal para sa iyo, galing ka na pala. Ganun yung maraming tao, mga kapatid. Huwag natin tularan. Pag bad news, nandyan yung mukha nila, nakakalat sa iyo. Pero pag good news, hindi mo na magkwento. Pag wala silang pera, nandyan. Para magdilihen siya. Pero pag maraming pera, hindi mo mabalitaan kung nasan. Yung pala, nagbakasyon kung saan-saan, hindi ka malakasali. Ni wala ka pa sa lubong. Kailangan, nagsasabi tayong, okay na ako. Maganda ang balita ko ngayon. Hindi lahat ng pagpunta natin sa kamag-anak, sa kaibigan, dahil wang ihiram. Meron naman, punta ka doon na, o, ka nandito ka na naman? Di ba, di na lang kita ng regalo. Di biglang napangiti ngayon ang kaharap mo. Yung mabaligtad naman na meron namang good news sa'yo, inililibre ka isang taon, minsan naman sabihin mo, ay, wag man naman ako ilibre ngayon. Ngayong linggo, ako naman maglilibre sa'yo. Or, babayaran ko yung gasos para sa sarili ko. Hindi yung lagi ka nalang nakaasa. Bibigyan mo ng pahinga ang gumagastos, ang naglilibre, ang nagsusuporta. Para pag nakikita yung mukha mo, hindi ka naman pagsawaan na laging hihingi ka nalang hihingi. So Peter came with the good news. 
Good news, I'm okay, but now that you know it, you can rest. Then he went away. At sabi, sabihin ninyo sa mga kapatiran natin ang magandang nangyari. Hearers always have to be tellers. Alam mo ang balita tungkol sa Panginoon? Pwede pa malita mo. Natatag pa ang presensya ng Panginoon halimbawa sa kapatiran, sa mga worship services, sa church, magdala ka ng iyong mga kaibigan. Bring a relative, bring a friend. Share good things, not only the bad. Tell people about what you hear from the Bible and what you hear from God in your personal reflection. So Peter left and went somewhere else for security. For his security and for that of the group. One major lesson, do not needlessly and foolishly put the church at risk, in danger. Marami pa pong churches hanggang ngayon nagtatago. Hindi lingit sa inyong kaalaman, you know that we have many underground churches in countries where Christianity is not openly practiced because it is not allowed. So we have very, very elaborate policies how to keep the safety of our people. So hindi nyo ipinapahamak ang mga kapatiran dahil lang sobra kayong masigasig. Halimbawa, sa mga bansa na ipinagbabawal po ang mga open worship, mayroong mga Christians who are actually really being arrested for worshiping. They are being arrested and they say they are being persecuted. But the truth is, they are being arrested because they're too noisy. Mayroong mga fellowship sila and they park just anywhere and some other people's driveways are blocked by their own cars. So these people will call the police. And the fellowship will be raided, not because they are worshiping Jesus, but because they are blocking driveways of neighbors. Then some of them would get into their fellowship houses, loudly, noisily disturbing neighbors. They will call the police, so people will think, you know, the police is after us because we're Christians. Well, actually, because they are a disturbance to the community. Kailangan marunong tayo ng good manners. Even in countries that are free, kailangan hindi ka gumagawa ng paraan para nasisiraan tuloy yung church. There are many community churches magsisimula ng worship. May mga drum spot, mga kono ng mga trompeta ng 5 a.m. E di siyempre mainis sa mga, mga, mga kapitbahay mo doon. Ipinapahamak mo yung church with careless behavior. It is important to be sensitive to those issues. Especially in places and times of persecution. Balik tayo kay Pedro. Bigla siyang nawala sa kulungan. Automatic bumukas ang pintuan, automatic sumara uli. Ang kadena, hindi naman nilagot, pero nalaglag. Ang mga gwardiya, nandun naman sa mga poste nila, pero wala silang nakita ang lumabas. Malaking kaguluhan kinabukasan. Acts 12:18 to 19 The next morning, the soldiers who had been on guard were terribly worried and wondered what had happened to Peter. Herod ordered his own soldiers to search for him, but he could not find him. Then he questioned the guards and had them put to death. After this, Herod left Judea to stay in Caesarea for a while. Hindi magkamayaw ang mga sundalo doon sa kulungan dahil nawawala ang bilanggo ang kanilang star prisoner was missing. Investigations had to be done. Herod had to send his presidential guards to know the truth. Hindi niya pinagtiwalaan lang yung prison guards. He sent his very own personal guards. And then, the real guards in the prison were questioned. And they were put to death. You know why they were put to death? Dahil nawala ang prisoner nila na hindi nila maipaliwanag. Ayaw ni Herod kumalat ang balita na nagkaroon ng himala. So, pinatahimik. Herod tries to kill the news by killing the newscasters. The witnesses. And because Herod knew that something happened, he could not be in Jerusalem for long. He went to Ju he left Judea and went to Caesarea, which was also some distance away, from the south where the Dead Sea was, up to the north near the shore. That's where Caesarea was, and it was not an easy travel. But he had to leave Jerusalem. The news was getting too hot, and who knows what could happen. Next, so he had to get out of this very troublesome situation. Acts 12:20 to 23. Meanwhile, Herod he holds court 
in the north where he really resides. Yun talagang area niya. He was not really from Jerusalem. Doon ang kanyang area. Acts 12, 20 to 23. Herod and the people of Tyre and Sidon were very angry with each other. But their country got its food supply from the region that he ruled. So a group of them went to see Blastus, who was one of Herod's high officials. They convinced Blastus that they wanted to make peace between their cities and Herod. And a day was set for them to meet him. Background lang yan, ang tunay na kwento. So nagkaroon ng pagkakasundo na makikipagkita itong mga nag-aalitan ng mga grupo at haharapin sila ni Herod dahil merong malaking usapin tungkol sa trade. So a day was set. A day was set for them to meet with him. Herod came dressed in his royal robes. He sat down on his throne and made a speech. The people shouted, You speak more like a god than a man. And once an angel from the Lord struck him down because he took the honor that belonged to God. Later, Herod was eaten by worms and died. Bakit kaya ilangan si Herod na mamatay ng ganun na lang kadramatically? He was struck down by the angel in public and then he died. And of course, other verses say that he was eaten worm by worms alive. He was alive and he was already eaten by worms. Some doctors will have some explanation for this. But we laymen just content ourselves. Kinahin siya ng uod, buhay pa siya. What was wrong in the context of Jesus? Remember that the Christians were being killed because they believed that Jesus is king? Now here is a pretender king who wears royal robes, sits on a throne, and when he makes a speech, yung mga nambobola sa kanya, says, you are more like a god than a man. And he accepted it. Sabi niya, thank you very much. Suddenly, the angel went down from heaven and struck him. Heaven could not tolerate this pretender because there was a true king of Israel. He was Jesus. And there was a true son of God. There was a true God. That is the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Herod accepted this glory that belongs only to God. When Herod got this glory that should have been given to God and gave it to him, the angels struck him and worms ate him and he died. We are not Herod, but we can be like him sometimes. We can get honor that belongs to God. Pwede nating agawin yung kalwalhatian, kapurihan ng Diyos, Meron tayong konting kabuhayan, nakakatulong tayo sa tao, pinapasalamatan tayo. Hindi man lang natin sabihin, well, thank God who is the source of all things. And you say, you're welcome as if it really comes from you, as if you were not a recipient yourself of God's goodness. Meron kang katangian. Pagmamalaki mo, magiging mayabang ka dahil doon na parang ikaw na talaga yung pinagmumula ng katangian, kayamanan, kalakasan, without acknowledging that all good things come from God. This is like doing a herod. Pag-agaw sa kalwalhatian ng Diyos. May mga religious leaders na nagjo-Diyos-Diyosan. Nadadaig pa ang Diyos kumisan kung umarte-arte, kung magsalita, kung makahingi ng debosyon ng mga tao. This is a great lesson for all of us to keep to our correct places. That all of us, though we may become channels of blessings to other people, we may be gifted here and there, but all of us are just recipients of God's mercy, of God's goodness, of God's kindness. And never once should we be tempted nor deceived to allocate for ourselves the glory that belongs only to God. So Herod and his cheering squad tried to assert and reassert his claims to the throne. Actually, it was a very defiant move. Why did Herod make an extra effort to wear royal robes and a crown and to sit on a throne for a very simple meeting? Because he was trying, he was trying very hard to discredit the claims that Christians are making for Jesus. He was trying to reassert his identity as the king of the Jews, not this Jesus who was killed on the cross. It was a direct affront to the very identity of Jesus and the very reason that he died. Herod and his cheering squad tried to grab the honor that belongs only to God or to the Son of God, a challenge to the Christian claims about 
Christ. So an angel struck him down publicly. Why publicly? Because his sin was very public. Public sins are publicly dealt with. Needless to say, private sin should also be privately dealt with. That even if you belong to churches or fellowships that hold their people accountable for their sins, if it's a private sin, it must be dealt with privately and not publicly because it's not publicly committed. Commensurate dapat, bagay, doon sa crime, yung ginagawa mong parusa. Now, an angel rescued Peter. An angel struck Herod. And worms completed the mission. Pwede palang mag-partner mga anghel at mga uod to accomplish God's purpose. Even worms obey God. Even worms accomplish God's will. Jesus was killed because he was king of the Jews. Herod was killed because he was not king of the Jews. Yung buong issue was hinged on who the king of Israel really was. Maraming lesson yan mga kapatid para sa ating buhay. But for now, make friends, not enemies, with angels. Make friends, not enemies, with God. Stay in your proper place in the scheme of things. If you go to prison because of God, it is God's business to rescue you. If you are being rescued, do what you can and let heaven do what you cannot. Dapat malinaw sa atin yun and never ever steal God's honor or glory. Do not be a Herod. Do not persecute the godly. Sometimes we persecute the godly only because we do not understand them or more often because we do not like the kind of popularity or attention that they are getting and we become jealous so we persecute people. Dapat lagi natin chinecheck ang puso natin na hindi tayo nang uusig ng mga mabuti. Na hindi natin ginagawa at tinatawag na masama ang gawa ng kabutihan. And of course, never ever take God's glory for your own selfish use. Ano ang lesson ng Acts chapter 12 na ito? Ama namin sa langit. Napakainam na gunitain ng kasaysayan ng iyong iglesia. Nakatutulong sa amin na alalahanin ang nangyari sa nakaraan upang ang mga pagkakamali nun ay huwag na namin ulitin ngayon. At nagbibigay din namin sa amin ng inspirasyon ang mga pagkilos mo na naganap noon na maaaring maghanap pa rin hanggang ngayon dahil hindi kayo nagbabago. Ituro mo sa amin, Panginoon, ang mga lessons sa ito to be like Peter to sleep through our imprisonment if there is nothing else left to do anyway because we are chained. Na pag wala na kaming choice, wala na talaga kaming magawa, nagawa na namin magagawa, turuan namin namin sarili magtiwala, magpahinga kahit parang mahirap gawin yun. Para kung sa aming pagtulog, sa aming pagkakahimbing ay makapag-ipon kami ng lakas para pag dumating yung anghel, para kami kalagan, pawalan, may lakas na kaming naipon para ituloy ang aming dapat gawin. Teach us, Father, not to waste time and energy problematizing things we cannot solve anyway. But after we have done what is practical and what is doable, to rest in your love, to rest knowing that you know our situation and that you are a God who cares. Ito, Panginoon, ang ipakadiin din niyo sa amin na maalala namin na walang imposible sa inyo. Pati kadena nakakalag, pati mga pinto ang bakal na bubuksan kung kalooban niyo ito. Nawalagi kami, Panginoon, na magtuon sa pagsunod sa inyong gawain, sa pagsunod sa inyong mga yapak, at kayo na ang pinagtitiwalaan namin na gumawa ng mga imposible para sa amin habang kami naman ginagawa yung kaya namin dahil binigyan nyo kami ng ganong kakayanan. Panginoon, kung natutokso po kami maging mayabang, agawin ang kaluwalhatian sa inyo, maghari-harian, magdiyos-diyosan, ituwid nyo po kami. At nang lagi na, kasihan kami na inyong Espiritu at ang inyong pagpapala, kapayapaan, laging sumaamin. Pagbalay-bulayan natin ng mga kapatid ang ilan pang personal Lessons para sa atin ng Acts chapter 12. It's good to study history. You don't always find many, many lessons in your spirituality or morality, but knowing where the church came from, knowing how our spiritual ancestors survived and prevailed can help us when such difficulties come into our lives. Lord, teach us. Make this story personal to us. Open up our hearts for more personal application of these principles. Let us be alone with the Lord. 
And may the Lord talk to each one of us in a very personal way.